So setting your mind is so important because with setting your mind, it means that you are not giving any space to be corrupted. You're not given any space to be corrupted. <clears throat> let me let me go and find out myself. Cause we got a lot of we got a, a lot of old young people on on. <laughs> we got a lot of old young people. They type all extra slow. They type all extra slow, just like they they on some sleeping pills. You got a lot of old people, old young people. The young people want to be old and the old people want to be young. The old people dressing like young people and the young people dressing like old people. I never seen the day where you would see an older guy wearing some FUBU Timberlands. <laughs> Some Fubu Timberlands and all that good stuff. And then you see the young men up there wearing size 56 suit and they only 100 pounds. You got on a Shaquille O'Neal suit and you got a Steve Curry body. Who raised you? Who raised you? You got on some, uh, some LeBron James size shoes and you got Allen Iverson feet. You got Roddy Rich feet. Who raised you? Never knew I'd see the day. With the older woman, they got on mini skirts. The, the young woman got on, doggone, blessed be God, got on, uh, what they call it, Catholicism. Catholicism, Catholicism. <laughs> Got on Catholicism, Catholicism, Catholicism. Got on long dress, full of stress, mess. They think they passed their test. Never knew I'd see the day. With the old people acting, you you talk to a young you you a young a young preacher would you'll think that he like a old man. He act old. He dress old. You look at an older preacher. He dress young. He got his hair slicked down. He trying to be a daddy. He got on the jerseys. <laughs> Hey, he got he got on Jerry Rice jersey. You know he got to get a retired jersey. He got on Jerry Rice jersey. He had... You you see a young man. He up there got on this big old uh, don't go chasing waterfalls TLC, not the channel, but the singing group. <laughs> he got on six hundred pound life shirts. You go to the older man, he got on muscular shirts. He's showing all his stuff. He, he in the picture like he, he about to have a stroke. <laughs> I never knew I'll see the day. This is my sermon. I done switched it up. I never knew. I'm going to switch the title. I never knew I'll see the day where old people act young and young people act old. You see an older woman, she done got her hair done, she boom, she boom, boom. You go see a younger woman, she got a bonnet wrap. Look like she about to carry a jug of water on her head, like she about to transport jugs of water. Like she Rachel's sister in the Bible, like she 
that she about to You see the older woman, the older woman, the older man, he he up there working out his body. Boom, boom, boom. He up there trying to stay young. The younger man, he done got old. <laughs> he done went on a date. He up there breathing fast. She like, oh, no, you're not my type. Well, I'm not your type. Well, I'm not your type. Well, I did. Well, I did. I ain't doing that wrong. Well, I'm not your type. No, nah, I can't. If you're breathing fast now, you're going to be... You're going <laughs> Never knew I'll see the day Where the old people Act young And the younger people Act old But these are the last days <laughs> By this We know we're in the last days Not because Joe Biden running for president. Saints, it's, it's absurd to me that anybody would even think about voting for Joe Biden. It's not even hard to recognize that that man, he's getting older in years. This man needs to, he needs to find Jesus. He needs to surrender all. Like he's in his retirement years. It's shocking to me that people would even vote Joe Biden. That's how you know that the IQ level of the world has extremely plummeted. Like, you, you, you don't even have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be someone that's been in school all your life. You don't have to be extremely intelligent to understand that Joe Biden, something is terribly wrong. And how could you even want somebody to deal with the affairs of a whole nation if it looks like they don't even know how to deal with the simple affairs of themselves. And he is what he is. That, that's okay. He can choose to be who he is. But what I'm saying is, it's crazy that people would even consider voting for him. And uh, number two, poll numbers are a lie. I remember in 2016, when Hillary Clinton was in, and um, it was President uh, Trump and all those different things. Nobody wanted Trump to win. CNN was always against President Trump. They was always against. So they always give false numbers. Fox News is the only news that's kind of credible. Even you can call what I said, kind of. Because when they get ready, they're going to flop right over. No news system is credible except the Holy Ghost. But polls not poll numbers is a lie. Poll numbers. Polls. That's why they call it polls. You know? Because it's, it's a naked lie. <laughs> That's what <laughs> they strip you of the truth. Polls. A poll is a stripper of truth. So none of it is valid. You won't really know who actually until is announced. You won't really know because all these new systems have been given over by the prince of the power of the air to give you wrong news. How not to go back and forth? You have to set your mind. And once you set your mind, you have to praise God in the same direction that you have set your mind. You have to give God thanks in the same direction that you have set your mind. When you set your mind, you have to talk in the direction that you set your mind. You have to meditate intentionally. Meditation is a decision that you make. Like saints, you're not going to see me go back and forth. Like you're never going to see me come on with no long beard. <laughs> you... You never going to see me doing no no shave November or none of that stuff. I'm never you never going to see me come on with no with no spaghetti mustache. Cuz that's not me. You understand? This is my signature. Now, watch this here. I said all that, but if the father ever wanted that, blessed be God, you'll see me do it in an instance. Boom. Boom. 
beard, boom. Up there looking like I'm an Islamic priest. Change my name to Rabbi Shishama. I'm going to change my name to Rabbi Shishama. Rabbi Shish. Shish with a S. Shish. People going to be talking. Two ladies going to be talking. Talk, say, hey, how you doing, sis? I'll be like, huh? What you said? Because my name going to be Shishama. Rabbi Shishama. So when I hear sis, I'm going to think it's a shish. I'm going to huh? What you said? Nice to meet you, sis. Nice to meet you, too. Oh, you weren't talking to me? All right. Well, don't say my name then. Say my name, say my name. If you're not going Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, and the other one, we forgot who that was. Because I'm not going back and forth. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going back and forth. Somebody touch your neighbor, say it is what it is. I'm not going back and forth because I've set my mind. I've set my mind. You understand? When you set your mind, there's more confidence that you discover. If you take a note, write that down. If you set your mind, you discover your boldness. When you set your mind, you explore the depths of that same subject, that same topic. If you look at the first three letters of topic, you'll get the word top. See, I set my mind to do my hair, right? I set my mind to do my hair. So look at my hair. I explored the confidence of doing my hair. I did all this. I explored the confidence, the boldness, the ability. I discovered it because I set my mind. Now, if I had in the back of my mind, I'm going to go to a barber. I'm going to go to a barber. Oh, I'm going to go to a barber. I am the barber. It is what it is. I set my mind. It is what it is. This is something about Prophet Joshua Holmes that I attract Africans. I attract Africans. They're Africans. I, if I went over to Africa, boy, I would never be. Boy, I, I, they would really call me. If I went over to Africa, they'll really call me. They'll really call me. Man, they'll they say, oh, shoot. Because I. Every, I'll be walking, people be kissing my feet. Get your get your malaria lips off of me. It is what it is. Point number two. When you set your mind, you destroy insecurity conversations with demons when you set your mind you destroy insecurity conversation with demons when you set your mind that you look good demons can't tell you oh you too fat oh you too skinny oh you ugly oh you need you see what I'm saying because when you have set your mind and I know a lot of people on Facebook that have set their mind. I know a lot of people on Instagram that have set their mind. Because they be cross-eyed, shark, daddy shark teeth, daddy shark teeth, stroke, no joke mouth. And they be still talking about when that light hits you right. <laughs> they be out there posing to when that light hit you right. Yeah. And then then we got them other ones that they try to trick you like they're a main commodity. Don't be riding me in my inbox, boo-boo. Because I'm not going to answer again, all right? I know who to answer to. Baby, ain't nobody riding your inbox. Ain't nobody... 
Ain't nobody running you in your inbox. I, I know I know you popping in your head. You saw messages in your head. Ain't nobody running you in your inbox. Ain't nobody running. Ain't nobody running you in your inbox. You got you got to fix it. You got to fix it. You got to fix it. And then we got the third layer. We got that one that's always doing a Facebook, Instagram story, and they taking pictures just. Ooh. And you can hear them talking in the picture. Ooh. And they be throwing up gang signs because that arthritis borderline kicking in. It hasn't reached its full totality. They be having borderline arthritis, so they be up there throwing up gang signs. Ooh. And then when they do their hand like this here, they think that they think that they put their hand right here like this here. They don't know that it brought out the crab. The crab family out of them. The crab family. Point number four. Point number four. When you set your mind. You tarnish the memory of past mistakes. When you set your mind. You tarnish the memory of past mistakes. You suffocate condemnation. By setting your mind. When you set your mind, you suffocate condemnation. Condemnation is a demon's exaltation of a time that you didn't listen to the Father, a time that you didn't submit. A successful day is the forgetfulness of the darkness yesterday. If you're taking notes, write that down. Yeah. I'm him. <laughs> My last name, Gates. I'm him. I'm the Imperial. <laughs> some, some of y'all won't understand what I'm talking about. But it's all good. I'll explain it to you soon. I'll explain it to you soon. <laughs> I'm the Imperial one. I'm the Imperial one. You ever heard them people like they be? Point number four. Remember that. Whenever you set your mind, you suffocate condemnation. You tarnish the memory of, of, of past mistakes. You're no longer contemplating the darkness of yesterday. When you set your mind, you visualize the manifestation of what you dreamed. When you set your mind. See, Joseph had to set his mind. So jail didn't tarnish him. Potiphar's wife didn't crush him. Because he had set his mind. When you set your mind Hannah, you're going to get a son called Samuel. No matter what, it is what it is. <laughs> no matter what, you're going to get a son. Because you have set your mind. And watch this. The anointing of Hannah is this. She created an atmosphere to give birth to what she saw mentally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? She created an atmosphere to give birth to what she saw mentally. Have you created an atmosphere to give birth to what you saw in your mind? Your your mentality is full your your mentality is full of photos. There is photography streams in your brain. You ever caught that? I never heard that before. There are photography streams in your brain. 
When you become a person of discretion, a person of intelligence, you only click on the right photos. Why do you think that Apostle Paul said casting down vain imaginations? You got to delete that photo. How many of you all know if you delete a photo in the iPhone, it doesn't delete fully. It just goes into the deleting bin and it stays there for a couple days. I want to say this. Some of you all have deleted vain imaginations that Satan sent you, but you didn't know that it didn't fully go away. Is in the deletion bin. You got to cut it and delete it so that it's erased from your photography. You catching this? What y'all think about this? this? This is massive wisdom here. This is massive wisdom. You can go inside of your recycle bin and, and think, oh, I deleted this photo. I didn't like it. It didn't look right. I thought this, I don't think I was posing correct. You're like, why is this still in my phone? But you deleted it. But it's not really deleted. How many thoughts that are hiding inside of you, waiting to manifest at the appropriate time? Because even demons understand timing. Remember what the demon told King Jesus? Have you come to cast this out before time? They understand timing. Setting your mind on wealth, setting your mind on abundance, God's way. According to the word of God, it doesn't produce anxiety, but it produces rest. There is a focus on money that makes you anxious, extremely eager, overwhelmingly distracted from what God wants you to do to get it. But there's a focus on money that is a divine focus. It is the spirit of the Lord revealing to four leprous men that there is money in the enemy's camp and I'm going to scare them off and you're going to obtain the money. That's in the book of Kings Four leprous men. God put a focus on them for money. Hallelujah. I never preached this before. Wow. 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 So this is really a, 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 a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. That God put a focus on money to Abimelech. He put in his mind after he had took Abraham's wife, after he took the prophet of God's woman, God stricken his whole house and none of them could give birth. And God put a focus on money in Abimelech. Abimelech, the king, was focused on moving money in the hands of Abraham. This is powerful. We're finding out right now, apostolically, that there is a Holy Spirit focus on money. Where he magnifies money to you because it is the set time for favor. And he himself gives you a focus on money. It's not for you to hate your situation where you are now or for you to get anxious to get out of the current place where you're living. But it is a focus on money to give you inspiration and energy to endure your current cross and to have the appropriate attitude to magnetize provision. To have the right spirit to, to be excellent. And to finish all of your financial tasks from God. If you take a note, write that down. Finishing financial tasks from God. Finishing financial tasks from God. Because sowing is the agenda of the Holy Spirit for progress. The prophet is the agenda of the Holy Spirit for prosperity. Glory to God. Yeah. This is this this it. This the one. Yeah, this the one. Yeah, this. This it. This it. it. It's financial mantles dropping on heads. I'm talking to you. There's wisdom and revelation flowing in your belly. Meditate on this. Watch the replay. The anointing of wisdom and joy. 
How many of you all enjoy the YouTube? The YouTube. Is there anything that caught your attention that stuck with you? On the YouTube. Seven more wicked spirits. Demons of the underworld. Seven more wicked demons of the underworld. What's something that caught your eye? What's something that caught your eye? Demons of the underworld. Seven more wicked spirits. What's something that stuck with you in the teaching? Seven more wicked spirits because they think they own you. I think it's Matthew chapter 12, verse 44. I think it starts at 43, but 44. I think it says... The demon said, now let us go return back to my house. The demon is saying that your body is its house. It didn't say, let me just return back to the house. It said, let me go return back to my house. So you see how demons in the spirit realm believe that they can get you back into the very thing that God has given you power to master to rule, to be over. So you'll find that out with people. You'll find that out with situations. Why you think that there's family members that come to you so aggressively like they own you? Because that's what goes on in the spirit realm. So many times, hallelujah. I feel such an anointing on that because that's ministering. I just felt virtue go through my body as I was talking about that. Because that's, that's somebody's revelation right there. You may even have friends that you call your friends. That's my girlfriend. And use a woman or that's my, that's my best friend. That's my buddy. Use a man. And you wonder why they're so aggressive. Because they actually think they own you. And there's a wisdom of how to deal with stuff like that. And the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom. Number one, sanctification is major when you deal with situations like that. Sanctification is major. So God will create a distance and you got to be willing to agree to it. When God creates distance, agree with it. God is not pushing any way, anyone away from you that's right for you. God has never put distance between anyone that will edify you. Me and you are not distant. I'm always on this line. I'm talking to you. We close. We this close. Me and you on a FaceTime call right now. Damn, my teeth white. It is what it is. Me and you on a FaceTime call right now. We very close. I FaceTime you almost every day. We very close. God has never separated someone that had the right heart. When Legion wanted to follow King Jesus, King Jesus told him to stay there. And he was delivered. He has to learn how to be delivered. He, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He has to learn how to intentionally stay free. He has to learn how to intentionally be whole. 
Not the wholeness that leans on Jesus talking about, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But only God knows. No, 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 no. He had to make a decision himself. I will only do what I see my father doing. I'm going to, I'm not waiting for nobody to give me a word, give me encouragement, give me a boost. No, no, no. I'm a willfully find the path that God has for me. And I'm going to stay in it. And when people tell me to get out of it, I don't care who they are. I'm not going to move. When they tell me not to obey what the spirit told me to obey, I'm still going to do it. When I lose people that I used to like, I'm still going to do it. When doors shut on me, I'm going to still do it because obviously that door was not a heavenly door. If I'm listening to the instructions that come from heaven and the door shuts, obviously the door was not from heaven. It was from hell with a heavenly appearance. It was from hell. How many doors, windows, gates have the appearance of pearls, but it's from the world? If me obeying the spirit shuts the door, I've been protected. If me listening to the father cuts the relationship, I've been preserved. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Wow, 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 wow. 